Hi, my name is Mike Bachman, and I'm a United Methodist pastor, and uh, I'm excited that we're able to share in a little question and answer time uh, with Imam Omar Soleiman. Uh, he's here to answer questions from some folks who have been part of our audience as we've been having an extended conversation together. Uh, so I'll introduce them each, and i um, looking forward to hearing their questions and the response that uh, Imam Omar has. So now we have uh, Claudia Wilson, who is here. Uh, she lives in Fort Worth, which is a city right next to us here in Dallas, and also lives a lot of the time in New Mexico. Um, so I'm excited to have your question with us, Claudia. This is probably one of those questions you can answer with yes, but I'm really aware that there are there a lot of racism exists in the world, in within cultures, within countries, mm -hmm. um, and the uh, white European types are probably the worst at this, but do you think that the, the Islamophobic reaction we're seeing, that there's a strong underpinning of racism is what drives that, that, that fear and hatred? So, so that the, the same people fear? that are Islamophobes tend to be anti-Semitic, tend to have other, there's certainly a, a, an element there of bigotry and racism that's, that extends beyond the Muslim community. Uh, there are different level, there are different types of Islamophobes. You've got the far liberal right, the Bill Maher types, right? You know, and you've got the hardcore, extremely bigoted racist types that are racist against other groups of people. So the same people that will say derogatory things about Mexicans and say derogatory things about Jews will probably say, and, and about blacks and about whatever, will also say it about Muslims, right? And so, yeah, there's definitely an element of white supremacy in much of and much of that bigotry, um, but it's not it's not all all it's not across the board, but it is stemming from that in, in many cases. And what about within Islam itself? I I know um, there are three types that I'm aware of. The third being Ismaili, uh, and I I asked that a question once of an imam, and he dismissed one of those groups as not being quote real. Mm -hmm. And so what about, the, is there a certain amount of a pecking order, shall I say, amongst the <laughs> different uh, adherents to Muslim faith? So there are lots of sects, lots of sects, right, that, that in some way, shape, or form associate, affiliate with Islam, right? Uh, it's not for me as an individual to say to any person that you do or do not uh, belong to Islam as an individual. But there are groups certainly that adhere to a foundational you know, uh, set of of, of, of what we call the Articles of Faith, the Articles of Iman, that make a person a Muslim. Uh, and in Islam, you don't, it, it's, not, it's far more monolithic than you'll see in other faith traditions. So 90% of the Muslim world adheres to one school of thought, for example. Then in that 10%, you have many, many, many different schools of thought. So amongst, uh, so the largest obviously being the Shias. And even that, by the way, I would say, I, I'd like to point out something that I don't think we got around to in the interview, but it's very important to point out that sectarianism is also a product of political turmoil. Mm -hmm. Because in Iraq, before the bombings and before it, the country went to, in the direction that it went to, Sunnis and Shias intermarried, they had children together, they, 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 had, they had good relationships. There were clear theological differences, but there wasn't this you know, fighting that we see now. Uh, you know, where you have ISIS and you have Shia death militias and things of that sort against each other. This is, this is a product of political turmoil. But there are clear differences. So even within Shiaism, the Ismailis would be a group of the Shia. Um, within Shiaism, there are multiple schools of thought. Some of them adhere to the core principles of Sunnism as well. And some of them uh, are even considered, uh, you know, not to be Muslim by other Shia groups. So within the Shia spectrum, there are some Shias that would consider other Shia groups to be, you know, too far uh, uh, off from the uh, from the foundational principles of faith in Islam. But what I would say is this: just because, as as a theolo as a theologian or as 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 a person of faith, um, I would not consider a person to necessarily be adhering to the foundations of Islam, and I would not consider a group to be. Muslim in the orthodox sense does not mean that I have to bomb that person or that I have to, you know, we have to bomb their mosques and we have to fight them and things of that sort. So I would still respect them as human beings and as citizens, even if I did not consider their faith tradition to be in accordance with mine. Uh, but that there's a great uh, diversity there, just as there is in Christianity and in other groups as well. Thanks. Thank you so much. Appreciate it.